each day and every day by Chicken Analytics, head over to chickenanalytics.com forward slash today. Sign up for a free email where we get a lot of the content for this show, as well as give you daily stock ideas to consider. Hits your inbox every trading day before the market opens. So U.S. equities fell sharply on Monday with all of the major averages declining by more than 3%. All sectors were lower on the day. Now, the defensives and the bond proxies outperformed. So utilities, REITs, and consumer staples outperformed. Your underperformers were energy, tech, and consumer discretionary. Treasuries rallied for a third consecutive session. Dollar was weaker against the euro and the yen. Gold closed up. 1.7%, adding on to that uh, Friday move of about 1.8%, and WTI crude was under pressure yesterday, down 3.7%. As we get to the desk this morning, we're going to try for a little bit of a turnaround Tuesday with futures up about 40 basis points. Uh, yesterday's decline was its biggest one-day pullback since December 2018. Asian equities were mixed overnight. European markets are weaker this morning. Treasuries are mostly stronger. Dollar is weaker against the yen, but stronger on the euro. Euro cross gold down 1.9%, giving some back. WTI crude is up 10 basis points after yesterday's 3.7% drop. And in all honesty, we actually have something different to say today about the structure of the S&P 500. That decline yesterday opened a big gap to the downside, right? And first support is broken following that 3% decline. Remember, we've been highlighting 3,250 to 3,300 as the first support zone. Well, we closed below it yesterday. Support is now at the January lows, right? We're looking at those January lows, call it 3220 or so where we held yesterday. That's the next key support level. Below that, we have to start thinking about 3000 to the 3100 range. And that does encompass the breakout in October from that summer consolidation. Now we are still above the rising 200 day moving average. And just to put things in perspective, a 10% decline from the recent highs would take you right down here to about 3050, that breakout level, the 200 day moving average. The RSI leaves bullish ranges. We went below 40 yesterday following that divergence that we were talking about for the past couple of weeks. Jake and money flow does remain bullish, but also was making a divergence as the market was making new highs. These indicators were making lower highs. So what we'd really like to see is a stabilization today above the 3220 level. So far, futures uh, are, are pointing that way, uh, but we got to be cognizant now that is a big window that opened to the downside. Call it a gap, call it a window, call it what you will. Um, that's a pretty big move for an index, uh, an opening gap to the downside. So just something to be cognizant of. Uh, for our indicators, uh, we're not oversold yet looking at our overbought, oversold indicators. So we think it makes sense to remain selective here uh, until we uh, get down to an oversold level where we can reevaluate the position of the market relative to key support levels. Taking a look at our market in a minute now, major averages fall more than 3% on the day. We touched on that. SPY closes below first support. We touched on that also. Sector rotation favors defensives and bond proxies. Right Over the past uh, week or so, we've seen a rotation into things like staples, utilities, REITs, the areas of the market that outperformed yesterday. Relative trend in technology remains bullish but extended. Remember, we talked about that last week. Uh, how we were extended or we wrote about it anyway in our note. And as I said, futures do point to a higher open here today. Taking a look at the major indices from a power bar perspective, the decline yesterday did some damage to the power bars. What tends to happen here is a lot of stocks get pushed into neutral uh, from bullish on a big breakdown like that. So the Dow down 3.5%, 2 to 8 bulls to bears. S&P 500 down 3.3%. 84 bulls to 97 bears there. NASDAQ was an underperformer, shedding 3.85%. Still bullish on the ratio, though, 21 to 9. Small caps uh, down over 3% as well, 366 to 312 bulls to bears there. Big rally in bonds, sending yields lower. Remember yesterday on the show, we talked about key support giving way for the 10-year yield. According to the Chaik and Power Bar, small cap stocks are somewhat more bullish than large cap stocks. Major indexes across the board, however, are mixed. At our stock of the day now, stock of the day auto generated based on the power gauge rating. And then I look at it for you in real time here. CIT Group, uh, part of the bank's industry group, closed at 45.55 yesterday, down 3.08%. Power bar ratio, um, I'm sorry, power gauge rating is very bullish due to very attractive financial metrics, very strong earnings performance, a very strong price volume activity. 20 factors, five in each of these buckets. Gives us our very bullish rating for a stock that's just holding on to a strong trend as it did close above 
the long-term trend line yesterday. Industry group strong from a power bar perspective, but on a relative strength standpoint, the banks have been under pressure with declining yields. Taking a look at CIT, uh, not a name that we're interested in at the time being. All right, our very bullish rating, sure it's in place, but continues to underperform the market as it has been since July. Overbought, oversold, moving towards an oversold condition, but money flow is bearish, right? So really not the type of name uh, we want to look at in the current market environment, maybe add it to a bullish watch list and see if things improve uh, along with that very bullish rating. But remember, it's the rating plus relative strength that tell us the types of names that we want to own. And this with relative strength continuing to underperform with banks under pressure, with yields coming in, just doesn't excite me all that much when I look at a name like CIT here. Uh, so we're going to take a pass on this one today. We'll add it to a bullish watch list and monitor the situation. Looking at our sector tracker now, the movement of the major sectors over the last five days, and not surprised after a 3% uh, drop in the market that all of the sectors are lower over the past five days of trading. But as I look at the top of the list here, right, there's that defensive feel, right? REITs, utilities, staples, these are defensive sectors that are outperforming the market over the past week of trading. Materials, healthcare, industrials, and discretionary are middle of the road but all lower financials lagging as rates come in. We talked about that. Monitor those banks closely. Comp services coming under pressure as some of the higher momentum names uh, were clipped yesterday. Energy just continues to be an area of the market that we want to avoid. Oil under pressure. Interestingly, oil did not make a new low yesterday, despite being down hard on the day. But energy stocks continue to fade on an absolute and relative basis. And tech, uh, tech took a beating. There, there's no two ways about it. Tech is kind of ground zero. Uh, for, for anything China related. Semis came under pressure yesterday. We talked about the importance of monitoring relative strength in the semiconductors. We'd be looking, you know, if you're bullish, you want to see a quick rebound, number one in the semis, number two in technology. So something to keep an eye on uh, today um, and in the days ahead, especially if the market can stabilize at those January lows around 30 to 20. Our industry in focus today, software and services, which over the past six months, has underperformed the S&P 500 by, call it four basis points, call it flat, right? However, power bar ratio is bullish. Uh, 34 bulls to 28 bears there, currently ranked number nine of 21 subsectors, having moved down three slots over the past week. So some of the names there uh, that kind of look compelling or where you might want to do some more work, uh, CACI International, CACI, the ticker symbol there, uh, has a very bullish rating. Mantech International, M-A-N-T very bullish rating and TiVo has a very bullish rating at Chicken Analytics. Now, as we take a look at the ETF, I think it's kind of interesting here, right? We have a bullish ETF for XSW of a bullish rating, strong trend as the stock held and rebounded back above the rising long-term trend line. So we have a bullish fund that's outperforming the market with bullish money flow as it holds above support here at the 102 to 104 range and closed back above the rising long-term trend line yesterday. Now we did open a gap to the downside, right? Not surprising considering the gap that we saw in the market. What I'm seeing here is a fund that's rounding out of an overbought position, needs some time to get back to an oversold area. What I'd love to see is a consolidation here between 104 and 106, kind of hold this level, work off this overbought condition, and then starts to set up some potentially compelling opportunities in an area of the market that did outperform yesterday, right? S&P 500 was down 3.3%, right? Not a consolation, but XSW was down less than the broader market. Taking a look at what's trending now, yesterday's S&P 500 movers and shakers are gainers and losers. Regeneron up 5.5%, has a very bullish rating here at Chaken Analytics. Did catch an upgrade today after there were some positive analyst comments yesterday. Gilead, uh, WHO announcing that Gilead potentially has a treatment for coronavirus that sent that stock higher by 4.6%. Uh, Newmont hits a 52-week high as that stock rallies with the price of gold. CLX being uh, pitched as a potential positive play on coronavirus uh, as a function of their uh, disinfectant products. And Mosaic MOS uh, didn't see any news there to drive the outperformance in that stock up 1.15% yesterday in a brutally down tape across the board. Our losers, uh, Carnival Cruise Lines. I guess I'd have to ask the question, do you want to be on a cruise ship right now? 
We've seen all the news in and around cruise ships being quarantined and held in port. Carnival down 9.4%. CNT, CNC, Centene, uh, some fears around coronavirus, but I think the more likely situation here is that the managed care stocks uh, are trading very much inversely to how Bernie Sanders is doing uh, in, in the primaries and in, in the polls. Uh, in his standing as the potential Democratic candidate, his Medicare for all uh, would be a negative for the healthcare providers like Centene. Centene down 9.4% yesterday. Norwegian Cruise Line, same story there, 9.3%. Uh, Royal Caribbean, another cruise line down 8.9%. And then uh, Tapestry TPR with a bearish rating here at Chaken Analytics, uh, down 8.7% as consumer discretionary stocks were under pressure yesterday uh, in uh, in that week tape. Let's talk about what we're writing about today. Uh, tech is bullish, but extended. It's Tuesday. We do our relative strength work, right? Talked about what we're seeing from a rotation standpoint, right? Into the defensive areas of the market, into the bond proxies, as investors appear to be becoming more fearful. Now, tech remains a solid trend. Uh, but last week, we started writing about the fact that it was extended to the upside. Take a look at tech here. Right, XLK relative to the SPY was close to three standard deviations above the 200 day moving average last week. And we've started to see a pullback here as tech has been under pressure over the past couple of days. Now, the fund remains with a very bullish ETF power gauge rating, and it still has a bullish uh, power bar ratio with 14 bullish or very bullish stocks for only eight bearish or very bearish stocks. The ratio is above the 200 day moving average, and the RSI of this relative ratio is still holding bullish ranges here. We got down to 45 yesterday, so still holding. So we would look for a stabilization with the market here, right? If the market stabilized, we want to see tech do well and lead to the upside. This trend is still in place, pullback notwithstanding. And on an absolute basis, we still have an uptrend from the late 2018, early 2019 lows. That uptrend not being threatened just yet. Right. So some near term pullback from an extended position for the tech sector on a relative basis. I call it normal. It never feels normal. Right. Everybody is always looking for a normal pullback. Right. But it, when you're in the heat of it, uh, it doesn't feel normal. Right. But we have to kind of objectively look at the trend here and say that the trend is still bullish despite the pullback over the past few days of trading, both on an absolute and relative basis. We'd be looking for this RSI to hold bullish ranges to signal that we're likely to resume to the upside for tech on a relative basis. Growth versus value is at a key level here, right? So we've been talking a lot about how growth has been outperforming of late as investors have had concerns about global growth slowing. If we take a look at the Vanguard S&P 500 growth ETF relative to the Vanguard s and P 500 value ETF. We had a nice breakout move higher confirmed by momentum as the indicator became overbought. Now we've pulled back to the breakout level, right? And we see this a lot with individual stocks. We see it with ETFs. So why can't we see it here with a ratio uh, a breakout and then a pullback to test the breakout level. If you're long growth, you want to see this breakout level hold. We are above the 200 day moving average RSI of the ratio holding bullish ranges. And I do think we're likely to hold here because a big key in driving the view on growth versus value and whether or not investors are concerned about a global growth slowdown for us has been monitoring the ratio between copper and gold, which I'm showing you here at the bottom of the chart. And you can see that when copper is lagging gold, as it has been, the line is heading lower, that's usually due to fears about a global growth slowdown. We actually broke down to new lows yesterday uh, with that decline in the market. So I think I wouldn't be surprised to see a stabilization here in the growth versus value relationship uh, and a continuation higher in that trend. Finally, a relative breakout in REITs, XLRE on an absolute basis. Trading near 52-week highs, the fund is bullish. Three to three bulls to bears on the ratio. Above the 200-day moving average, RSI holding bullish ranges after becoming overbought. And check out the breakout versus spy on an absolute on a relative basis as investors rotate into defensive areas in the market. That'll be it for today. Head over to the site and take us for a test drive. I'll be back tomorrow.